Hey guys, quick breakdown of what's going on. We're in Philly right now with a super scientist who's making us taste and smell all of these weird things to get us a sense of our senses. That was gross. Oh man, kind of gross. But what's happening here is definitely weird but true. I don't smell anything. Charles. Oh. Hey guys, Charlie here. You know my sister Kirby. Hey guys. Oh my gosh, we're so glad that you're here. I think we just gotta get right into it. So like two minutes ago. Two minutes! We were in the kitchen enjoying our favorite snack. Jalapeno garlic knots. There we were, noshing on some wicked knots. Mm. When all of a sudden, our older sister Casey showed up. Hey guys, what are you guys eating? Garlic knots. You guys smell. Awful. What are you talking about? We smell great. You want a nut? Yeah, no thanks. You don't like jalapeno garlic nuts? You so gross. How is that even possible? Bizarre. We don't understand. How can Casey not like something so heavenly? But we're gonna get to the bottom of it. So today, we're unraveling the world of... Smell, smell and, and taste. taste. Senses, the best part of life. You gotta love them. Using our senses, we can... See wonderful birthday decorations. Happy birthday. Hear the jolly voices of our friends singing happy birthday. Smell a surprise birthday pie. Feel a birthday present. And taste a delicious birthday cake. So yesterday was Charlie's birthday, if you didn't notice. Happy birthday! Okay, okay. But let's focus senses. What is a sense? Well, we've got five basic senses. First, we've got touch, sight, and hearing. They're all super similar because they track changes in our environment, like changes in temperature, changes in the light, or changes in sound. Taste and smell are a little different. Here's what I mean. First, taste. So our tongue is covered in a bunch of different taste buds. And if we just take a little bit of a closer look, we can see each taste bud is made up of a bunch of different taste cells. And each of these cells recognizes one of the five major tastes we can detect. You've got your sweet cells, your salty cells, sour cells, bitter cells, and umami cells. Cool science word, umami. Umami is the fifth basic taste. It's more savory and meaty. Cool, cool. So each taste bud can recognize each flavor. How nuts is that? Super nuts. So that's how taste works. Molecules from our food and drink bind to taste buds, which trigger certain cells that fire taste-specific signals to our brain so we can detect delicious tastes, like jalapeno garlic knots. Mm. Unless you're Casey, of course. Time for smell. Smell is kind of like tasting with our nose. Instead of deliberately shoving material into our nose like we do with our mouth, super light molecules from our food float through the air into our nose. And inside our nose, there are a bunch of teeny tiny proteins. If we take a little closer look at those proteins, we see that they have receptor areas too. When those super light molecules bind to the proteins, a signal is sent to the brain and we sense a smell. And the really incredible thing is that these smell proteins are very specific. So when we smell like birthday cake, molecules of whatever we're smelling actually go into our noses. Crazy neat, but also kind of weird because it's the same for bad smells. Molecules of bad smelling things also go into our noses. But maybe that's why Casey doesn't like jalapeno garlic knots. Maybe at the time she was smelling something disgusting. Yeah, but I wish there was a way we could figure this all out scientifically. What was that? Package. Whoa! Sign here. What the heck is this? Check it out, there's two tubes. And a letter. Hmm. Dear Charlie and Kirby, happy belated birthday, Charlie. Oh, that's so nice. Keep reading. This is Dr. Reed from the Manel Chemical Census Center. Smell and taste are our specialties. Enclosed are two saliva vials. If you'd like, fill them with your saliva. Wait, our spit? And mail them to our lab and come by for a visit. Sign your friend, Dr. Reed. This is perfect. They'll know why Casey doesn't like jalapeno garlic knots. I don't know, Charles. Kirby, it's fine. Just start spitting. OK. Mine's done. Yep, me too. All right, throw it in the box and... Manel Chemical Census Center. You got it. All right, guys, I guess we're gonna head over to Manel. 
Kukul. Let's ride. Heading over to Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. Philadelphia, the city of brotherly love. Famous for its tasty soft pretzels and cheesesteaks. The Manel Chemical Senses Center, the place in the United States to study taste and smell. It's Dr. Reed. <laughs> hey, Dr. Reed. Hi, guys. Guys, Dr. Reed, Dr. Reed, guys. Meet Dr. Danielle Reed. She is the associate director performing and overseeing all kinds of research on taste and smell here at the Manel Center. Her favorite weird but true fact is there's a wildflower that smells just like chocolate, commonly referred to as the chocolate daisy. So Dr. Reed, we sent you a bunch of our saliva earlier. Have you been checking it out? Yep, we've been looking at the DNA. Are we normal tasters? You'll have to come and find out. Oh Hi. man, let's go, let's try it okay. out. Dr. Reed has set up three different experiments for us today. These will help us learn the weird but true ways our senses of smell and taste actually work together. First test, we're gonna learn the difference between your sense of taste and your sense of smell. So we're gonna start with the dreaded nose clips. So taste and smell are kind of intertwined, but I don't really understand it. There's two things going on. One is on the tongue, which is our sense of taste, and then there's actually our sense of smell. There's a back door up to the nose. That's how you appreciate flavor, when you put food in your mouth. Okay. So are you ready? Yeah, I'm okay. ready to go. Dr. Reed will show us how we need both taste and smell to get the full flavor of food. And to demonstrate this, we'll see if we can figure out the flavor of our jelly beans. You're just gonna put it in your mouth, yeah. and chew it up. <laughs> and as you're chewing, try to guess the flavor. That's the plainest tasting jelly bean <laughs> I've ever had in my entire life. Yeah, take your <laughs> nose clips off. Whoa! <laughs> That's gross! <laughs> What'd you get? I got licorice. <laughs> I really don't like licorice. You knew it was sweet, but you didn't know what the flavor was until you took the nose clips off, and that yeah. allowed that sense of smell to come into play. The next test, we're going to show you a little bit about your sense of taste. So some people are born able to taste bitter compounds, and some people can't. And we took your DNA in advance. So I actually know whether you guys can taste this compound or not. So this is just a clear, plain liquid. Dr. Reed tells us some people think this liquid is gross, but to others, it tastes just like water. And I'm really hoping I won't be able to taste this stuff. Cheers, man. Cheers. Let's roll. Uh, what was that? That was icky. How do I make it stop? <laughs> That's the grossest thing ever. So that's, that's a gross. chemical related to some of the chemicals that are in broccoli. If you tested our saliva, you knew we were going to taste that, right? I did know. <laughs> Dr. Reed, evil taste scientist. Let's break down the difference between taste and flavor a bit more. If Charlie were to describe the taste of a cake, he'd say something like... It's pretty sweet. If Charlie were to describe the flavor of a cake, he'd say something like this. It's got a warm, lemony smell, but kind of a touch of nutmeg. Cool, cool. I think we got it. So now we're going to move on to something called Miracle Berry. Next up, Dr. Reed will show us how we can trick our taste buds. Though these berries are not sweet themselves, they have the capacity to change things into sweet in the presence of sour. So first thing we're going to do is I'm going to have you taste a lemon. And remember what that sour lemon taste is like. Not too hot. <laughs> now we're going to take a miracle berry and we're going to run the pulp all around our tongue. Oh, That's damn. not sweet. We're going to take our lemon again. Mmm. <gasps> you get it? That's not bad, it actually. Tastes like candy. It tastes like candy. Do yeah. You, you kind of get that sweet lemonade feel. That tastes kind of like a lemon pound cake. Dr. Reed wasn't lying. This berry makes lemons taste like lemonade. Cheese tastes like frosting, and vinegar tastes like fruit juice. But miracle berries aren't the only thing that can do this. Sprinkle a little salt on grapefruit and it tastes sweeter. Eating an artichoke makes water taste sweeter too. But the mother of all flavor hacks, toothpaste and OJ. Toothpaste contains the chemical sodium lauryl sulfate, AKA SLS. SLS makes toothpaste super foamy, in our mouths, we naturally have a certain amount of phospholipids, which block our bitter receptors. SLS gets rid of those phospholipids. This makes our taste buds much more sensitive than usual to bitter molecules and things like orange juice, making it taste all gross. So now you know, it's just a little sodium lauryl sulfate. 
If you guys think this is neat, you should meet with the flavor chemists. They study all of the different molecules that go into different kinds of foods. Flavor chemist. That's an actual job. That's an actual job. All right, guys, we got to head back to HQ because we got a new topic on our hands, flavor chemists. So we'll be back in a bit. Thanks for the jelly beans, and thanks for an excuse not to eat broccoli anymore. <laughs> See ya! No, no. <laughs> That's not what I said. Weird but true. Scents smell better through your right nostril than they do through your left. Charles, you gotta check this out. Hey guys, welcome back. Oh, hey. We're just enjoying a nice little snack after our long trip home from Philadelphia. This is amazing. Our friend Dr. Reed, who works there, was just telling us about flavor chemists. Flavorists. Kirby's been doing some research, and apparently this job is pretty awesome. Yeah, check it out. It's all here. Hmm, okay, so apparently, dating back to 1927, researchers thought that humans could only detect 10,000 different smells. But by 2016, they determined we could detect over one trillion different smells. One trillion. That's a lot of smells. And detecting all of those different smells is what helps flavor chemists, aka flavorists, design the flavors of our food. These superstar chemists make the mind-boggling flavor creations we all love. And it seems like it'd be pretty easy, right? Not so much. In the United States, an aspiring flavor chemist starts out as an apprentice at a flavor house for seven years before they finally have the opportunity to become a certified voting member of the Society of Flavor Chemists. And that's when you know you're legit, when you're in the society. And the work they're doing is pretty tricky because flavors are difficult to make. So how do they do it? They've got a superpower. A very real, actual, scientific superpower. You know those tongue taste charts that look like this? Well, weird but true, the taste chart is a myth. You don't taste salty things on the bottom of your tongue and sour things on the side. You taste everything everywhere. Because every taste bud has cells that recognize every basic taste. And most flavorists are super tasters. It's a real thing. All right, so the amount of taste buds in our mouths varies from person to person. But super tasters have more taste buds than average. Like a lot more. So everything they taste is extreme. For example, if a super taster and a normal taster both drank the same sour lemonade. To a normal taster, it'd be just like a little sour. That's just like a little sour. But to the super taster, it'd be incredibly sour. Woo! Everything tastes extreme to a super taster. Flavors aren't just flavors, they're flavor explosions. The cool thing is, this is a very normal thing and super tasters walk among us every day. Are you a picky eater? Do you turn up your nose at the mere sight of broccoli? Do certain cheeses make you queasy? If yes, then you, my friend, may be a super taster. Yeah, maybe you don't like those things because you actually have an awesome superpower. And lucky for you, there's a way to find out if you do. A super taster test. A test that you guys can do at home. Let's give it a shot. Here's what you need. Blue food dye, cotton swab, tweezers, hole punch reinforcement, a magnifying glass. First, using the cotton swab, coat the front third of your tongue with blue food coloring. So the blue dye dyes the tongue, but not these little dots called the papillae. And each papillae has three to five taste buds in them. Next, place a hole punch reinforcement on your tongue. Pro tip, stick two together so you don't have to taste that sticky glue. Then ask a buddy to check your tongue out and count the papillae inside the whole punch reinforcement. So if you have less than 15 papillae, you're a non-taster. If you have between 15 and 35, you're a normal taster. And if you have more than 35, you're a super taster. Let's see what we got. All right, guys, Kirby and I counted the number of papillae and now we have the results. Kirby, the number of papillae on your tongue was 20. No. You are a normal taster. Oh. That's okay. That's okay. That's fine. Charles, your papillae count was 17. No! Oh, I wanted to be a super taster. That's okay. All right, back to HQ. Oh, that's all right, Curb. There are other super things about us. Very true. Another birthday package? Special delivery. Whoa. This one's from Fona International. Dear Charlie and Kirby, we heard that you were unraveling the world of taste and smell today. How does everyone know this? We were wondering if you'd like to visit our flavor house, meet with our taste experts, and make some flavors yourself. Hope to see you soon. Sounds pretty hard to pass up. We're definitely going, right, Kirby? Oh, we're going. Awesome, we'll see you guys there. Weird but true, girls have more taste buds than boys because girls have more papillae. Oh, hey 
guys, welcome back. Today, we're talking about sense of smell and taste. And earlier, we got a letter from this place, Fona International. It's a flavor house just around the corner from us in Chicago. Let's go check it out. All right, let's head that way. The experts here work with over 4,800 raw materials to create delicious flavor combinations that can be found in all sorts of different foods and drinks. It's the perfect place for us to put our smell and taste skills to the test. Oh, hey, Charlie Kirby. Hello. Hi. Hey. How's it going? Good. How are you guys? Good. Did you send us that package? I did. You guys got it? Yeah, yeah. for awesome. sure. This is Lauren Morris. She's a flavor chemist, which means she creates flavors that end up in some of our favorite foods, like chewing gum and potato chips. Her favorite weird but true fact is, you're more sensitive to smells when you're hungry. Before we get started, she has us put on some safety gear. You ready to be a flavorist for a day? Oh yeah, Let's do awesome. It. Where are we starting? We're gonna make a coconut flavor. Coconut. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna add two raw materials. How many drops? How many we add in here? So you're gonna add 0.1 gram. Lauren shows us how mixing chemical materials with long fancy names like acetolactone and gamma nonalactone can make flavors like the coconut flavored drink we're making. We're at uh, 0.025. And you're good. Just a little bit goes a long way for these flavors. Beautiful. Can we make it fancy? Can we make it any colors or? Absolutely. It's a great way to look at the flavor and see the different colors and how it mixes and if it's in solution. That's it. That's right. it. And we'll just give it a gentle spin. That's okay. awesome. There's a little tornado inside. All right, flavor is mixed. It looks great. What happened to our pink color? Well, it gets dissolved. Let's see how it tastes and if you can pick out the nuances of coconut. All righty, team, let's give it a go. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> nice job. It is coconutty. Yeah. It's totally Maybe coconutty. Coconut. So what do these flavors taste like in actual food? Paul, our application scientist, is in the lab waiting for you guys, and he can show you how to add the flavors to the food products, and then you guys can taste them and see how different they are. And we can eat some things? <laughs> Absolutely. All right, we're heading that way. You guys did awesome. All Thank right, you thanks so, so much. much, Lauren. See ya. We're off to meet Paul Hoffman. As an application scientist, he tracks ratios of raw materials that go into different flavors. He also experiments with different techniques and tools like sprayers and mixers to add flavors that make our foods taste great. His favorite weird but true fact is, the fattier the food, the longer it holds the flavor in your mouth. Hey, are you Paul? I am. Lauren sent us over. She said you're a food application scientist. Is that right? I am. So you guys made coconut flavor, but I made a flavor that I want you guys to try out. So we've got our chips. Going in the chip machine. And here's our flavor. So it's kind of like you're misting a flavor onto the potato chips. Yep, exactly. All right, we're ready to go. OK, mystery flavor. Let's do it. Any ideas? I'm smelling caramel or something. I'm smelling like right? brownies and nail polish. <laughs> it's like a weird combo. Chip for you. Thank you. Paul. Thank you. Chip. Thank you. Cheers, Chip. Cheers. I think I have an idea. All right. It smells caramely. OK. But I think it's more flavored. <laughs> you guys got it. I had no idea. Yeah. It's 100% smart. I'm very impressed with Kirby right now. That was so cool. I think I win the flavor game today. <laughs> I'll give it to you with that one. It's like marshmallowy, got chocolate, a little like a cinnamon graham cracker thing. Yep. Delicious. S'more flavored potato chip. Awesome. After proving that Paul can make potato chips taste like, well, just about anything, he's got another special taste test in store for us. Charlie, I heard it's your birthday this week. Hey, it totally is. All right, let's flavor some frosting for your cake. Nice. Perfect, let's do it. So we've got our frosting, my secret flavor. Ooh, it's orange. Orange hints or a trick? I'm guessing orange soda, what do you think? It's kind of brown looking root beer. Root beer. All right, can you keep spinning this? Yeah, yeah. we got it. And we'll go grab your cake. Awesome. What do you think? Give me guesses. Whoa. That smells weird as can be. For sure. Let's give it a taste. Oh, okay. Let's try it. Cheers, One, everyone. two, three. What on Any earth ideas? is it? Oh, oh. <laughs> I don't even know. 
Uh, well, that. That's a hot dog frosting. <laughs> oh. Just for your birthday. Oh, gross. that's gross. So I guess that's why you and Lauren have jobs, so you don't mix stuff nasty like this. Exactly. Thanks so much for helping us out today, Paul. This has been awesome and entirely disgusting, but you're clearly really good at your job. Thanks, guys. Come back anytime. All right, guys, we're going to head back to HQ, but we'll see you in a few minutes. Time to figure out once and for all why Casey doesn't like jalapeno garlic knots. Makes no sense. We'll see you in a bit. Weird but true. Your body can detect tastes in just 0 0.0015 seconds. That's as fast as a blink of an eye. Hey guys, we just got back from Fona International. So many flavors! More flavored potato chip. We learned a lot about tastes and the fact that flavors can taste differently to different people. Maybe that's why Casey doesn't like the jalapeno garlic knots. Ah, uh, yeah, I feel like we're so close to figuring this out. What else did we learn today? There are so many weird but true things. When you smell something, molecules of what you're smelling enter your nose. This can be good or bad. There's a berry that can make sour foods taste sweet. To a super taster, even bland <gasps> foods can be a flavor explosion. <gasps> All right, guys, the Casey dilemma. Why does Casey not like garlic knots? I don't know, because they're amazing. Hey, guys, how's it going? We're just trying to figure out why you don't like jalapeno garlic knots. What are you talking about? I love jalapeno garlic knots. But you didn't have any this morning. I had just brushed my teeth. Wait, what? The sodium lauryl sulfate in my toothpaste lowered the surface tension of the saliva in my mouth, basically destroying any phospholipids and bitter receptor inhibitors that were in there. That's flavor hacking, like with the miracle berry. You bet it's flavor hacking. But you know, that was this morning, so I'll have a jalapeno garlic knot now. All right, we figured it out! Another mystery solved. Celebrate with a garlic knot? Oh, yeah. All right, thanks guys so much for stopping by. Come by again when we discover more things that are weird. But true. We'll see you later. Cheers. Yeah. Garlic knife. Mm. Mm.